This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website to build websites. Okay, more on that later. Welcome to Watauga Skate Park. Today we have two different boxes. One has a lot of very new, pretty professional skateboards, and the other one is a professional Walmart skateboard. In this box is a $70 Walmart skateboard. It's the Punisher skateboards. I think it's 31.5 inches by eight inches. Hopefully I didn't buy the 775 inches like I accidentally do a lot. Okay, the biggest difference off the bat is that the trucks are actually made out of metal, some kind of metal. The wheels look like professional wheels, AKA a little bit better than the normal standard Walmart boards, but they're still, they're almost like a fake version of a good wheel. For once in our lives, let's actually try to get this plastic off somewhat smoothly. Oh, the idea that you have to take the trucks off to get the plastic off is horrible. Can you imagine a new skateboarder being like, oh, I have to completely take this thing apart just to get it to play? But yeah, first impressions, the actual deck itself doesn't feel great. The grip tape is grippy in comparison to the average one, but this also does feel like a size 8 or 775. It feels a bit skinny. I don't have high hopes for this, even though it was $80. Seven. I know on Amazon you can actually buy $70 boards that aren't terrible, that aren't really the Walmart Target vibe, so this has to kind of live up. If it doesn't, then Walmart has failed which is, you know, it's Walmart. I mean, what do you really expect? Spoiler alert, I do want to indulge a little bit and talk a little bit about my life and what I've been up to and the things I'm planning and working on after the session. But for now, let's get into it by skating four different obstacles, ledges, rails, manuals, and a little bit of transition and do four tricks on each. Tricks that I think will really utilize the board's capabilities and see how it falters and how it actually might surprise us. So let's get started. All right, here we go. We're throwing down the board. Let's see the first ride. Dude, it feels horrible. This feels exactly like the $15 boards. Like legit, this feels no better than the terrible skateboards already. Okay, no warm up. Let's just go for that 50-50 on the ledge. Dude, is it like, I I'm actually frustrated because I'm just like, a kid is going to be, I want a good board. He's gonna pay $70 and get the same board he would have gotten for $15. Like that, that frustrates me, genuinely. Like I, I can't, literally I'm a professional skateboarder who can't 50-50 with this skateboard. Plus I got on top a little bit and it started sliding this way, which means the wheels are really slick, which is obviously a problem. You don't want slick wheels when trying to grab friction. Yay. People will say, wax your board instead of waxing the ledge. Well, why not do both if you really want to slide? Do a no slide to see how the nose of the board actually cooperates. Yeah, not very well, which is very surprising. Okay. Oh man, Smith grind is a completely different type of trick than the other two, which is good. We get to see how bad it is at every type of trick. Yeah, man, this is like not good. Oh, I can barely get it to go, but we're gonna keep it because of that. For the fourth trick, let's try a crooked grind. Huh, actually that one grinded decently. The Smith grind of the bunch was the only one that really did not want to cooperate, but essentially not great. So manual, I'm gonna treat the manuals more like combos. So, you know, like manual to manual, just to see how it reacts when I try to ollie out of a manual, etc. See, it's not, oh God, there's so much resistance with the wheels. Oh my God. Come on, make it. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. That was surprising. The fact that that worked first try, very surprising. Let's try grind to manual because it's basically the truck resistance versus the bearing resistance. And I bet it'll just feel drastic when we make that switch. See, <laughs> I went, oh my God, I barely made it off the ledge, but I went from the grind that was relatively frictionless to just so much friction when the bearings hit. Oh, come on. Oh my God. The fact that it can barely make it up that going that fast. Horrible. The last one I thought we'd do is one that adds a lot of pressure to the wheels when we start manualing, which is a 180 to switch manual. It's just so much weight, and essentially, I could see it just stopping dead, but hopefully it tries to roll. Oh, it tried. It felt a little bit better than I thought, but uh, 
Woo. Okay. Wow, there we go. Move on to the rail and then transition. Before we get into all that, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been living within a balloon, Squarespace is the easiest website to use to actually build websites. It's all drag and drop. It's all self-intuitive. They have instructions along every step of the way. So if you are someone who is in the creative fields, any creative fields, and you want to build a portfolio for yourself, or you want to do a blog, or you want to sell product, or you want to essentially do anything to showcase anything, they have all all these award-winning templates to choose from and then from there they have customer service 24 7. it's so easy to chat and get questions answered but it's also very intuitive you can just do it yourself they also have email campaigns and scheduling so you can have meetings set up through your website you can have email campaigns to where the people who are following you can keep along with everything that you're doing and there's no algorithm involved so anyone that you actually reach out to and you send out an email it goes to everyone who subscribes it's not like other social media platforms where you know nine tenths of your audience doesn't get your notifications. There's also blogging. If the idea of making videos and blogging is too much for you, then you can just write and writing is a really good way to build up SEO as well. So if you are a master at something, if you are a cook and you want to write articles about the best vegan meals, then creating a blog around it will put you in the SEO more on the on the internet to where people look up that type of thing. You know, your blog will pop up and you can have your own comment section, your own like section. You can essentially build your own social media platform via your own website and if this seems like a big task it's really not this the, the the template downloading it and just starting to go is like so easy so if you want to sign up you can click the link in the description down below or go to squarespace.com slash john hill to get 10 percent off your first purchase or domain or you can just try it for free you can literally just boot it up right now start your journey start your creative business and and i don't know it's, it's been really nurturing for me uh, along this journey to have something like Squarespace. So thank you for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching this video. And now enjoy the rest of the video. People are starting to come into the skate park. So I'm going to be not the weirdo who yells really loudly at himself. The board side actually felt okay. Now let's try to grind, see how the trucks react to a metal rail. Oof. God, everything is, it's hard to pop correctly because of the bearings trying to stop you while you're putting the pressure to do an ollie. But besides that, it grinded pretty well. Feeble. That one is a new trick. Oh god, I hate the feeling. It feels like so much pressure before I ollie, but now I say let's end with a blunt slide. It's a trick that doesn't really typically slide well, doesn't really. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's actually scary. It doesn't have the kind of grip I want, so it's way scarier to go for tricks that have a bit of a risk factor. Oh my god, there's no way. I don't think there's any way this is gonna work. There was so much stickiness. Ooh, there we go. Okay, rail's finished. Wow, that was insane. I guess we could skate transition a little bit. So now we're ending with transition, which is hilarious because that's the thing I suck most at. But let's just do a simple axle stall and see how hard it is to get up the quarter pipe. Ooh, eh, not too bad. Going in was scary because you expect to zoom out, but your bearings are keeping you sturdy. I mean, that was awful, but let's take it. Now I say we do a pivot to fakie and then a blunt to fakie. Oh my God, okay. You know what, I feel like pivot to fakie is too similar to blunt to fakie, so let's just do like a front side air. Really low, because I suck. And also because getting speed is very difficult with this thing. Oh my God. Like even that felt so off. Okay, I say that's a... Uh... It's enough tricks to really get an idea of what this feels like. I'm sure my opinion is pretty clear by now, but it doesn't feel very different from a normal like $15 Walmart skateboard. If it's not that much better and it costs about five times the price, then what are you doing? The worst part per usual is the bearings. There shouldn't be any resistance with your board and rolling. It should feel as smooth as gliding in the air and you can feel it just tugging at you. And then the trucks themselves, even though they are metal, they respond very similarly to the Walmart trucks. They don't turn the way they should. When you bend down, there's so much pressure on the board that the bearings wanna stop, the trucks wanna stop. It's easy to get wheel bite. And then the deck itself, even though now it does have a bit of a concave cave which is basically that you that you want every skateboard to have the grip tape itself isn't that resistant and the board just feels uh thick like it feels very woody it feels like you basically just went to walmart home depot and bought some wood like a two by four and put it on a deck which is not the type of wood you want it needs to be very very hard and very 
doesn't feel much like a normal good skateboard. So if you go on Amazon and you look up like the $70 boards, I would say 70 to $100 boards. I would go with anything there over this. And I'm pretty sure CCS sells completes on Amazon that I think are close to $100. And truthfully, even though it's not the best setup you can have, it's a very good deck. It's a professional skateboard that doesn't have the resistance problems and all the problems that this board had. But we did session it and um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over it. I'm like in a lot of physical pain from the last three or four days of skateboarding and doing a bunch of shit. So uh, how about we just talk? Wow, that was sick. Dude, this guy's been ripping, and I wanna ask his Instagram, but now he's like kind of in the flow. So if you see this, wait, what? Oh my God. Hey, if you see this, dude, uh, yeah, hit me up on DMs, let's, let's talk. You're ripping, it's awesome. After filming that clip, I just decided to walk in there and have a conversation with this dude, and this is gonna blow your mind, like, His name is Christian Robinson. And I was like, why does it sound so familiar? And then he pulls up on his phone, the a screenshot from one of my old videos where he asked a question and I answered his question on my video. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I used to like see you in my comment section a lot. And like, this dude is ripping now. A lot of people who watch my videos in the past, I mean, this happens with anybody and anything, but with skateboarding, especially a lot of people who start skateboarding sort of fall off and kind of move, kind of move on to new things. So rarely, does someone like this just go, yeah, I used to watch your videos and is just like so good now, like shredding to the point to where I was like, I need to know this dude's Instagram because I got to follow this guy. He rips and he's a DFW skater who used to watch my videos, who now I'm excited about being like, dude, let's skate. I mean, come on, this is sick as hell. Let's open up this Revive box. Let's see what these new professional skateboards, the better version of good skateboards looks like and just see what, what Revive sent me because it feels like a really heavy, girthy box. Let's make this quick. The newest collection of Revive skateboards. Every one of these unboxings is like, a, it's, it's a pure heaven to me. Oh my God, they have all the wheels too. So it's wheels, clothes, and boards all in one big ass box. Ah I forgot to cut more of the tape. Four pairs of wheels, which I actually need to change out right away. And this one is just a cool graffiti type right here. And these are my professional wheels. It's a scary uh, pinata looking monster man. And I love the orange and the blue color palette. It hits me in the feels, in the good spots. And then I have another pair of those wheels. So there's basically two different types of wheels. I'm not gonna pull out the clothes just yet, but you can kind of get a sneak peek of what they're going to be. It's this this really cool cat person, the Force Wheels logo. So these are Force and Revive shirts. This one I know I'm gonna be wearing because I, I love white tees. As much as they rip up and as gross as they get, when you see like the white complexion, you're like, ooh, I'm about to shine in the summer sun. You got this Revive logo that's very edge core cool stuff. Oh, this one looks great. I mean, I, I love like character design in general and I'm pretty sure all of this is done by JP Kuvert. I can never really tell because he has such a wide range of art skills that sometimes I'm like, did he do this? Boom, another Force Wheels shirt. And now let's get to the decks a pokemon card this is actually pretty normal they include pokemon cards a lot which is uh kind of just shows how sick the brand i ride for is and of course it's hatena i don't i don't know who that is i'm sorry I don't, I don't know anything past first gen i promise i'll play the games john your new favorite pokemon hatena love revive plus force i fudging love these guys this is going to be a part of the bigger conversation that i want to have with you guys today about the upcoming trips that i have and kind of just you know everything progress daily and there's so much i want to talk about so much i want to share that i haven't really been able to in these videos so i'm excited for that there are one two three four five decks in this box down below starting with my professional deck <laughs> oh it's crazy to see my face actually on a skateboard you know usually you have like your name but this one is like if if my ego wasn't big enough they are definitely feeding it right here so i mean i really appreciate it this is like really cool really abstracty design very non-jp covert esque but of course like he's gonna be good at everything he does but fuck dude this like blows my mind it feels like a, a like a upc code like i could scan this and you could buy my soul deck number two wow dude look at this one man this one's way different no, obviously okay same one i try to keep two of my decks just in case i lose one in the process of life but i still have all my decks and i'm gonna i don't know what i'm gonna do with them hang them and then just be like look at me so i don't <laughs> you don't know what to do with them deck number two i presume this one's different 
Bam! Cool, so this is the very like edge core revive logo I was talking about earlier. This is really sick and this is this kind of like ironically matches the vibe of what is sick today in the outside world. Like the brand fucking awesome and like these like New York street brands, a lot of their logo designs kind of remind me of this except it's usually really small on a t-shirt on the front and uh, it's, it's yeah, revive, you know, cover all aspects of the Marketing, I guess, I don't know. Deck number three, boom, whoa. Okay, so this is really sick. Now this is very JP Cooper-esque. He's an amazing character designer. He plays D&D &D all the time, so this has that D&D &D feel. And the fact that he's holding a, this is really sick. Like I love whoever this character is. All these dead skulls. I feel like there's a lot of uh, darkness in the, I just did air quotes with the rock sign. That might be the sickest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, there's skulls, there's an axe, there's a banana. I mean, what, what is more evil than a banana? And last but not least, we have this deck right here, which is, this is actually the one that I thought was the coolest online. I love this deck, I love the rainbow color. It feels very free and fun, but then it has this dragon in it that gives this complete opposite sort of like, ah, uh, medieval feel. But the, the, the contrast within this board alone is like my type of, like the art I like, I like contrast. I really like things that feel separated within the art and this just feels super 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 cool so and it's just a great drawing of a dinosaur I mean really this must have taken forever so JP crushed it once again and that is the revive force clothing wheel deck collection I am hyped so because everything in my life is too organized I even organized this part of the video where I'm basically gonna be talking about progress daily collabs hanging out with people on YouTube who I've hung out with before and then just haven't hung out with in years obviously COVID being the main uh, culprit and then life and home type things home I talked about moving a lot and uh, we essentially just got a, a townhouse recently and we're renting and and we've been doing this thing for a long time and a lot of people are like dude I'd expect you to have this big home by now but the truth is if you're not uh, looking at the market, it has been horrible. It's been atrocious. The housing market is ridiculous in America and I'm sure everywhere, but everything is insanely expensive. And the idea of going to Texas and being able to buy your dream home wasn't our original intent. It was just to be around Sarah's family, especially during COVID and wanting to have a community around us, even if we couldn't hang out with a bunch of random people and people weren't visiting, because in New York, you're in the perfect main spot for people to come and visit and hang out. But we just didn't have that anymore in New York. So we did Texas. And then when we looked for an actual house after being here for a while, it was just, it was preposterous. The whole, whole thing was just ridiculous. And the place we were living in the beginning was actually a condo that we bought, that we were paying for, and we had to deal with something called HOA fees, which we were not into. You basically have to pay this extra fee that was adding up for a condo and it was essentially just paying rent all over again. It was giving money towards something that felt like you weren't ever gonna get your money back. So yeah. We are renting again in a townhouse and maybe one day we will buy a house, but for now we are totally excited to be paying way less for a place than we ever have in the last four or five years. So right now I'm actually able to save a good portion of money. Speaking of money, that leads into Progress Daily, which is my brand. Now, if you follow the Instagram, the thing with social media in general is it's been changing a lot recently because of the short form content that's been really popularized. Like TikTok has essentially dominated everything. So now YouTube and Instagram are trying to keep up. So if you are someone on social media who's been trying to upload and, and maybe build an audience, you'll see that things fluctuate like crazy. You'll post something one day that just takes off like crazy. And then the next day, you'll post something very similar that will get relatively known attention now this happens it's been happening I've been doing this job for six years so that kind of stuff doesn't bother me but when it comes to progress daily which is my brand it's been a little harder to deal with because it's a brand you essentially you know it's it's important to get the attention that it deserves and that it needs and to have you know the people that you're supporting and pushing through the content to get the attention but even the Instagram itself it feels sporadic and that's obviously a lot of that is my fault. I've been trying to separate Progress Daily from traditional skateboard brands. I want it to be all skateboarding, but I want it to be a new perspective, a new feeling that you get when you look at it. Something that skateboarding hasn't really provided for other skaters, a different feeling. But I feel like a lot of people who go to it want the same feeling. So you have to kind of match people's expectations while obviously creating something different. And honestly, because I've been focusing so much on my own YouTube channel, my own Instagram, etc. Everything that I think of that I think is a good idea for Progress Daily, I put it on my own thing because why wouldn't I? I mean, this is like, you know, you gotta prioritize what kind of works and where you're making money and your job, which is YouTube. So Progress Daily 
like the actual social media aspect of it, unfortunately, has kind of not taken a backseat, but it's been really hard for me to refigure out and reconstruct. And even the YouTube channel, Progress Daily, has 100,000 subscribers, and I haven't been able to really figure out how to build that momentum back up to get it back to where people are excited about it. Because obviously the project we did last year kind of blew up in our faces and it was uh, it was fun for the year, but it just didn't really work out in the end because it cost too much money. That being said, obviously with Progress Daily, we are launching the summer collection soon and I'm really excited about it because it's gonna be a very, very exclusive launch to where we have to have minimal product because I'm the one shipping them out because we're moving all production and everything to Texas where I am now. So it's gonna be a minimal, fun, awesome launch to hopefully reinvigorate this brand to be what I want it to be, which obviously I wanna make the coolest design clothes. I want it to be very DIY, it's very me, and offer products that you can't buy from wholesale distributions. Like most people use the same couple of wholesale brands to buy shirts etc but i'm using brands that literally most people can't get it's like these exclusive brands from a completely different branch but i'm excited about that part it's just it's really hard to uh market <laughs> like to do this is it getting dark what's going on is this just like a bad shot am i too angely okay yeah that shot was like way too angelic it was like glowing in the wind so figuring out the social media aspect of that has been quite a nightmare it sounds so stupid and silly but it is a brand and social media is a huge aspect of promoting any brand so i will eventually figure that out but it has to be beyond my own brand myself and i already have a full-time job trying to kind of put myself out there in a way that can eventually make money and luckily i do have brands like squarespace i forgot to mention squarespace earlier Budge. Well, you've already seen the Squarespace integration, so obviously I put it in there somewhere. But I have been posting to the Instagram every single day, so do follow Progress Daily and, and, and you know, let's try to beat the algorithm and actually have uh, an engagement based on, you know, just normal, friendly attention. And even if Instagram doesn't recommend it to the people who follow, which is insane, um, you know, the more people we get to follow it and check it out and get excited about it, you know, maybe we can organically build organically on social media. That's like, an oxymoron basically last but not least let's talk about collabs now i, I started off doing like a hundred collabs on youtube and that's how kind of my channel took off at the beginning i did braille and revive and everything i, and I moved to cincinnati just to collab as often as i could and i haven't done them in a long time because like essentially since i moved to new york city i stopped doing collabs because i was so far away from everyone but i had john reyes who was a scooter who was also a popular youtuber and it was cool collaborating with people in new york city but there wasn't that many skateboarders. There was like him and Brett Conti, but Brett Conti moved on to do other things. So it was just this strange thing. And now that I'm in Texas, it's actually easier for me. I can just go, I'm in the middle of the country, so I can just go any direction I can to collab with anyone. And now I'm excited about it because I went to San Diego the other day and it was just like this perfect, easy, cool thing that I did. Very exciting, very nurturing. And I realized that I can just drive places. I can just meet up with people. I can fly people here. Like I can actually start doing this. So I am planning this summer on actually going to a lot of different places. Cincinnati almost right away. California right away. New York again. North Carolina. Like all these places to collaborate with people. And there's nothing that excites me more than that right now just because Dude, I have so many good friends through these adventures and I never really get to hang out with them. And it's like kind of sad that I just have these awesome friends who I can work with and make content with that I just have it. So look forward to that. I know that was a lot of rambling, but I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was, it was strange. I just sometimes I like to get a little personal just because I like to share, you know, people are following and I want people following to have like a connection with kind of the story progression that's happening. And that's that's it. That's what we're working on right now. And th those three things I'm talking about are the things that we're really trying to excel. I'm not aiming to be po more popular with Progress Daily because that's obviously kind of up to the universe, but I am planning myself into making merchandise that I feel like gives a feeling that no merchandise has, at least within skateboarding. Um, and, and I think from my, from my unique experience, I'm able to do that with design and with just the actual merchandise itself, getting things that are really unique that other people don't have. So uh, I'm pumped. Hope you can't hear that loud, ringing noise the whole time. I'm just realizing that.